Well, good morning, Naledi, and uh, to our viewers. Of course, so we are here outside uh, the um, Dani Malan School here in uh, the north of Pretoria, of course, uh, where a group of angry parents have uh, gathered. You'd understand that it's the start of uh, the academic year. Many of uh, the parents, in particular in Gauteng, left frustrate, frustrated after their children could not find appropriate schools to, of course, start the academic year. And it's no different here at uh, the Dani Malan uh, School. But here, of course, another issue is also prevailing, um, and that has uh, attracted political attention. It is parents who feel that there is segregation at this particular school. They feel that um, uh, black children are being discriminated against. Uh, so, say, so here they feel that it's beyond just um, the issue that is experienced by the whole province where um, we understand that uh, the online application process in the Gauteng uh, province has brought many challenges for parents. And we understand that, of course, this is an ongoing issue. We see it time and time again. Each year, beginning of the academic year, we sit with this uh, challenge that uh, uh, leaves a lot of parents frustrated. But as I said, here, it's bigger than that. Um, some of the parents saying that they feel that uh, their children actually systemically excluded from the this particular school. Here's a parent uh, who has uh, a, 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 a grade one child who she feels that uh, is deliberately excluded from this particular school. Just share your feelings with us and tell us your story. So I applied online on time. Like every other parent, I submitted the necessary paperwork. Still, my child has not been placed. So I found this uh, group where the EFF actually created a platform for frustrated parents like us from no particular party just to help us get our children into schools within our feeder zone. But on Monday we were here, literally a staff member literally told us as parents, this school is not meant for the K word, it's meant for them. Who told you that? One of the staff members, I cannot say who, but it was one of the staff members. So we have come here to create change. The EFF is here to create change because we are not being heard. We are being ignored. We are here, we, we actually witness. Who's not hearing you? Who's ignoring you? The government, the online system is not working. And we literally saw actually uh, racial segregation. In 2023, we actually witnessed it at this particular school. When you say you witnessed it, what did you see? Um, literally white kids on one side, black kids on one side, black children on one side. How do you do that? 2023. Now, the academic year has kicked off. Your child still does not have a school. What's your plan of action? What are you hoping for? How are you going to resolve this? I'm actually going to try and fight. I'm here with the other parents. We are fighting for our children to be placed within the feeder zone where we applied. We followed all the instructions. Give us space in a government school. Don't send us somewhere else. There is space here. How do you have one English class? One for each grade doesn't make sense. All right. Thank you so much. As I said, uh, it is a story that has also attracted uh, political attention. It's not the first time we saw this uh, last year. Uh, if my memory serves me correctly, this is perhaps the fourth time that we see the tensions that are boiling over at this particular school, the uh, accusations of uh, segregation, racism and discrimination uh, that uh, is alleged to be taking place. Of course, the school saying that there is no such. The crux of the matter is uh, the placement challenges that are actually caused by the province. But the EFF um, saying that uh, it's much deeper than that. Um, uh, Prince uh, Shabangu joins me right now from the EFF. Uh, uh, you've been very vocal. Uh, earlier things uh, almost got out of control as tensions were uh, high, emotions uh, rolling over and flowing over. Of course, uh, in particular after we saw that scene of uh, um, what seemed, obviously we do not understand what we saw. We saw a group of uh, uh, white children escorted by one teacher and a group of black children being escorted by another teacher and that uh, angered a lot of parents but as the EFF how do you respond? Um, thank you so much uh, the problem here has been ongoing for so many years the racism of this school uh, especially in particular the SGB the principal we were trying to engage with the school to say can we sit down with the SGB and the principal uh, so that we can give you the, gri the grievances that parents have they blatantly refused basically the SGB said to the principal no you can't see them so this school has been run by SGBs and mafias and Afri Forum 
and what you call these uh, biker boys, uh, uh, Beitelanders, soldiers of the north. These are racist organizations that are protecting the school. If you can see now, all the security cluster is here. Because of what? They are protecting this white privilege. But the school says that uh, there is diversity. It is well inclusive and uh, it's representing all the racial groups equally. Well, that's what the school is saying. Uh, we have seen that there is a significant number of black children in this school. So do you still think that there is race, uh, racial elements? There is racial elements. Firstly, why do they have different breaks for blacks and different breaks for African Is classes? that really what we saw or is it maybe just misleading what the eye saw because we don't have the facts? It's exactly what we saw. There's videos of parents here. There's about 100 and something parents here with the same footage. So are you saying what we saw and maybe we can't see or maybe we are blind? No. There's racism elements here and it's about to stop. We are still going to, we're not going to leave this as the EFF. We've got our original leaders that are here. We are taking this nationally. We will make them famous because of one thing. There is no way that you can have 15 children in one classroom and have the other classroom uh, because of they are black. They, they must be seated like sardines in one classroom. And they want to enjoy the privileges of this school as if, it, as if it's like a private school. It's not a private school. And we also want to know the SDS, uh, um, what do they call it? The SDSO, who's responsible for placement uh, when it comes to Danimalan because of we believe that the district as well is not doing justice to the uh, to the black child we are here for the dignity of the black child and we are not going to compromise when it comes to that they can do whatever they want they can scream they can turn red we're not going anywhere in fact they will not find peace in the in the north they come here with dubious uh, court orders and court interdicts we are saying to them we'll be here until we find justice until there's transformation this thing is about transformation. How do you have one English class and five African classes? You know why? Because of they want to control the language policy so that they are in charge. They want to make sure that they run this school like a private school. And you know what? Because of the sponsors here want to ensure that this school remains white dominant. It's not going to happen, not under my watch. Do you live in the area? Yes, I live in the area. What are the racial demographics in terms of numbers when you, when you observe closely? Um, it's, I would say 75 percent is black. Uh, even I will even say 80 is black. 20 uh, percent is is white. But the other thing that I also wanna emphasize, I've been staying here for more than four years. For the first time like yesterday, I was allowed into this office. You know why? Because of the MEC sent the delegate to deal with the racial issues here. When you are here, you have you have soldiers. Uh, you have uh, security, maximum security. Escorting white privilege. Okay. Do you see that same treatment being given to black uh, white parents? Never. It will not happen. You can look at them now. They are, they are red. You can see they are all red. They don't know what to do. And they are small boys. I'm telling them now they will do nothing. Okay. Moving forward, um, this has been ongoing. It's clearly causing a lot of racial tension. It's dividing um, the whole community. And we see this each year where this tension is uh, flowing over and the fights between the two racial groups. And sometimes it really gets out of hand. So what would be the best and perhaps the immediate way to resolve this issue? We, we, we are here, we came here on Monday peacefully, avoiding to come here when the schools reopen so we can engage with the principal outlining the, all the problems. They, are, they refuse. They're running the school like it's a spasa shop or is their own, uh, you know, uh, aircon services. They, we can't allow that. So now we are here. We want to engage with them. But because of they don't want to engage with us, then we'll become barbaric. All right. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, let's hear from the ANC. Uh, George Majila from uh, the Tony ANC joins me. You are part of the governing party. There's a huge problem here. It's been ongoing year after year. We see uh, the parents that are fighting. We see the racial tension. And of course, uh, speaking to the school, as they said, uh, the uh, SGB is speaking to us this morning, saying that the problem is actually the province, saying that uh, it's not a racial issue. It's the online system that is failing everyone. Are you agreeing with that? Well, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I think there are problems here. The problems are not uh, party political. It's not about EFF or the ANC. The problem is it's race, as uh, the, 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 the fighter alluded there. I think uh, even as you are sitting here, there's a clear resemblance 
of uh, racism. You can see there's white uh, uh, security, only white security guys there who are here to guard uh, the interest of uh, uh, white kids and so forth. Which and they came with big problem. dogs. Yeah. yeah, which is very problematic. But uh, uh, we are here to ensure that the problem is resolved. We are not going to act as victims anymore. I mean, this is our country, this is our town. We are here to fight for the rights of our kids and we are not going to, to negotiate for that. I mean, as we live here, these kids must be, they, they are, their problems must have been resolved. So that is why we want to get in there and speak to uh, whoever uh, cares to listen, whether it's the SGB or the school principal. Why only the, now? The ANC, as I said, you are part of the governing uh, a, a party in, in South Africa, not just in Tswane, right? This has been ongoing. It's been problematic. Each year we come here, we hear the parents, we see the fights. Why has it not been resolved a long time ago? Why has the ANC not acted on this issue? I mean, this is an ongoing problem. Uh, we are dealing with the issues on a daily basis. It's not like... Uh, but what, are... have, what has the ANC done to make sure that this does not reoccur? To make sure that there's a solution and all the parents are equally respected and in particular the dignity of the children is prioritized. What have you done? Remember, South Africa is a constitutional democracy. We and how have you used the constitution to protect the children? How have you used it? I mean, uh, on a number of occasions, we are changing laws to, to suit the situations wherein everybody will live peacefully. Uh, it's, a, it's a pity that uh, these people are taking advantage of the law itself. That is why they are taking us to court every time we are coming. Why with are you them. not upholding the law if they're taking advantage of it? No, no, of course, we are all upholding the law, but they are taking advantage, you see. The, 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 it's, a, it's a question of the system. We are fighting the system even now. I mean, 30 years is nothing. The system that you are governing, you are fighting it. No, no. What I'm saying, it's not a, laugh, it's, it's not a simple matter as you are saying it. We are saying, not a system that we are, we are using to govern. I mean, apartheid has been there for all these years. So in order to eradicate it, it will not take a, 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 a just a few years as, as, as you are saying. It's something, we are dealing with the big guys here. I mean... Uh, the, the, the fighter there, he calls them uh, small guys. They are not small. These guys are controlling the economy. They still have land. So it's not as simple as that. We, are, we, are, we want to see the things changing. We are fighting on daily basis. That is why we are here. You see, it's, an, it's not a matter of party politics. Uh, it's something that we need to do, and we need to do within the legal framework. We can't come here, fight people, and insult people. We must, we must be here and make it the point that we do things within the legal framework. Earlier we saw a disturbing... Um a scene, as I said, and, and, and I really want to put that disclaimer, we're not 100% sure what we saw, but we saw a group of uh, black pupils being escorted by one teacher and another group of uh, white pupils being escorted by another teacher. And the parents got very angry. They said that is um, racial discrimination or segregation. Um, some of them saying, but how can young children be taught um, such wrongs at such a young age because we'll try and get uh, you know the right facts but from what we saw what you heard what do you make of that well uh, we are here to to simply deal with such issues because they are giving an explanation for that what they are saying is that uh, some kids chose Africans and others English and so forth so we need to drill deep and get to the bottom of the matter so that we get to understand so that we don't uh, we don't we don't respond on the basis of gossip we need to get effects properly so that as and when we move forward, we have key effects. But it's something that we are not supporting, obviously. Hence, we want the meeting with these people. After the meeting, is there any plan of action maybe that you have formulated to at least move forward with this challenge? The only way to formulate a plan is when you have all the facts correct. You can't come up with a plan when you don't know exactly what the problem but is. How don't you know something that's been going on for more than four years? Every year we see this drama. How don't you know it by now? What more, what more, what more evidence do you need when we have been reporting about this issue at the school year in, year out? What more do you need? No, no. The explanation that we are getting right now is that it's the question of English and Africans and so forth. Hence, we want to get here and get to the bottom of the matter. It's not a question of uh, every year and every, every time there's a, new, there's a new problem. 
the problems are consistent, but they, they, are, they, are, they are differing in terms of nature and content. So that's why we want to deal with the matter. We are here to deal with the issues. So it's not easy. I mean, it's easy just to accuse a person, but it's always important that you get here and get to the bottom of the issue and, and so that we resolve on the issues. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, we also spoke to the school SGB um, and, and we spoke to M Mr. Dinas Force and he uh, put it on record saying that uh, there is no racial discrimination at the school. He was saying that it's not an issue of racism or uh, separate rules or separate, separate principles uh, for uh, the separate uh, or the different racial groups um, in terms of the children that are here. He said um, it's an issue, it's a governance challenge that they are facing and it's now filtering through to the community, of course affecting the parents, saying that uh, perhaps the challenges here at the school would not exist if uh, the Gauteng on online application system was in order, you would not see the frustrations of the parents uh, here. But of course, you've heard from the parent that spoke here, you heard the political voices saying that it's much deeper than just an online application uh, a process that's failing the process, the, the, the parents here. It's, it's, it's rather a systemic issue that's taking place. South Africa's murky history um, really uh, rang its ugly head at the school. That is what the political leaders are saying that um, you know our legacy of apartheid still being very much rife at the school and calling for change and of course transformation but we'll have to monitor the situation and really just find out what is really happening and as I said said that disturbing um, scene that we saw this morning of the two groups that were separate we need to get um, exactly what was that how does that uh, work and uh, the school that needs to come to the party and maybe the MEC must also step in and just find out what exactly was what, what was happening there. Um, of course, we heard that it's perhaps about uh, the two languages, some children that are being taught in English and others in Afrikaans. But of course, the facts are more important at this juncture. Yeah, of Patricia, course, there's, there's so much to, to look at here because there are so many moving parts. I mean, have we seen the presence of, say, um, education officials at the school this morning? Uh, that's the first thing. And I know that you said you've spoken to a member of the SGB but have they been outside to speak to those parents that are protesting outside the school well there's been several meetings uh, amongst the parents um, and the political leaders that are here. But in terms of a formal meeting between the parents and the SGB, we didn't observe that uh, this morning. But uh, um, they did appeal that the parents obviously, you know, behave orderly. Um, also, throughout the uh, school fence, um, there are uh, uh, copies of interdicts. Um, that uh, have been pasted on the, on, on, on the school uh, premises just to indicate to, in particular, the EFF that is here that the school did obtain an interdict that prevents any form of chaos. But as I said, things almost got out of control this morning after that scene of uh, the two uh, uh, groups of children that were separated. We saw them storming uh, the, uh, the, the gate as, of course, emotions were uh, running high. But so far, Everything is in order. School started on time. We saw um, children arriving. We saw the beautiful images of, of course, your great R learners as they were arriving at school. Um, and we, we, we saw both black and white children arriving at school. So in terms of the school itself, everything orderly. But of course, we don't understand the underlying issues. And these are issues that only the parents can give us the evidence of and tell us that we understand that this has been happening. As you've been hearing here, um, some parents saying that they've been observing this for many years. Um, and it would be very interesting to hear from the black parents who actually have children in the school to hear what are their experiences, what do they observe, how are their children being treated um, inside the school, in particular those who have children for many years here, um, and uh, just to find out what, what is really happening. It's, it's a complex matter, as you have uh, just said, and we hear the different views. Of course, the ones that are angry saying that it is a racism, it is discrimination. 
but uh, the school saying that there is no such. And I think uh, proper investigations perhaps into this matter will uh, allow us to get the right facts and get to the bottom of what is happening here. But now, lady, what is really concerning is the fact that this is ongoing. It's year in, year out, and we still do not have a proper solutions. You hear black parents coming at the school almost every year uh, bemoaning what they claim is segregation, racism, separate rules, and uh, you don't see proper investigations with uh, perhaps proper recommendations as to what's the way forward? How do we adequately deal with the situation? If there is elements of uh, uh, systemic uh, 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 um, problems that are filtering through in these schools, such as the country's history, um, you know, the legacy of apartheid, as some would say, if that is present at the school, then in 2023, we should not still be dealing with this. It should have been resolved a long time ago, in particular when you think about little children, they should not be subjected to uh, such evil, if one uh, may put it in those words. Yeah.